Hey everyone, when seasons start to change from summer to winter, we need all ways of keeping ourselves warm and cozy. Food plays a major part in that and ulavacharu is something that adds some heat to the body especially during the colder days. Soak one cup of horse gram overnight, a little longer is even better. I soaked these for one and a half days. These need to be pressure cooked or slow cooked until majority of the pulp is out of those skins. Here I soaked about 15 parts of tamarind. We shall use this later. If your tamarind is too sour, use a little less. I've drained out the water they've been soaking in and washed them. Added a little more to keep them from drying out as I prepare to shoot this video. Here I have some water boiling. You don't need to measure the water to be exact. About 2 to 3 times the ratio of lentils to water is good. I'll cook this for 5 whistles initially. Ulvacharu is a delicacy in many places of South India. It needs some patience and rushing it may not be a good idea. Trust me, I've tried many ways and the taste and consistency are not the same compared to the good old traditional recipe. The first 5 whistles are done and all the pressure has been released. The lentils have softened well but the skins are not broken enough yet. We'll strain all this liquid through a colander. If you have a mesh colander that will work as well. Do not use a plastic one. Get as much liquid out as possible. And do that to quickly rinse out any more left out pulp. Add that back into the pan. Add more water to this and cook it for a few more whistles. If you have patience, repeat this process as many times as you can or until all the pulp is out and just skins are left out. Since these have softened, adding a little bit salt will not hurt and will flavor the left out horse gram. I'm going to add about 2 spoons. This can be slow cooked directly in a pot without the pressure cooker or in a slow cooker but it's only going to take a little longer. I'm draining these for the second time after cooking them for 4 more whistles. Get everything in there and try to move them around a little bit so all that yummy cooked horse gram pulp comes out. These have cooked very well. I'm mostly seeing skins only. Do a quick rinse with a little bit of water just to make sure that there's no pulp left in these horse gram. And we will set these aside, we will not use these in this recipe anymore, their job here is done. Now pour all that charu back into the pan. Majority of the hard work is done. Now we can play with the seasonings and add those heavenly flavors to the charu. See all that yummy pulp underneath there, that's what we were trying to achieve by cooking this so many times. And this is the main key to a good quality ulva charu. This cannot be missed. Now this needs to be boiled for a few more minutes with all the seasonings and until it reduces just a little bit and becomes a little thicker. Remember the tamarind that I soaked earlier at the beginning of this video? I hand blended it with a little bit of water. Here I'm adding 3 tablespoons of sucanat sugar. You can add jaggery instead. Adding 2 more spoons of salt. I'll stir this up well and we'll shift this to the back burner. I'll have another pan heating up to toast some coriander seeds. Refer to the description for measurements. I mostly eyeball everything, especially Indian cooking. We'll try my best to give a very close measurement. We'll transfer this to the blender jar and toast some cumin and methi seeds. I normally don't make and store these powders as they tend to lose their fragrance and flavor over time. So I try to make them fresh. With the right kind of kitchen tools, cooking can be an easy and very enjoyable daily task. Scoop those into the blender jar. Now add some oil. I'm using olive oil here. Add some mustard seeds and some cumin seeds. Here I'm adding jalapenos. You can add regular green chilies and some curry leaves. Let those cook for a minute or two and add some chopped onions and cook until they are slightly brown. And back to our dear charu, add the toasted and ground coriander, methi and cumin. Add some turmeric and give this a good stir. 
It's a nice sunny and cold afternoon here and ulvacharu is a perfect comfort food for this weather. I'm adding 4 cloves not to the charu but into the tempering and some red chilies. This is not a masala curry but these will add just the right amount of heat and spice we need. Ginger and garlic will meddle with the ulvacharu flavor. I normally try to keep those away from this recipe but if you are a fan of it please add those to the tempering before adding onions. The onions look nice and soft and slightly brown. We can go ahead and add this to the charu to finish it off. We are almost done with this. Like I said be very patient with ulva charu as this is a delicacy and it needs to be cooked like one. We'll let this boil for a couple more minutes or until all the flavors are combined. Taste and make sure the seasonings are right. The consistency can be easily maintained by adding more water or boiling for some more time. Now the leftover horse gram. Most of the pulp is in the charu. These are just skins and can be eaten as is or add some tempering and chopped onions and consume like a snack or mix with vegetables and make burger patties. They taste amazing. Ulava charu becomes slightly thicker the next day and tastes great even if stored in the refrigerator for a few days. If you want to make this in bulk or make for a party ahead of time, add tempering just to the amount that you will be using and store the rest back in the refrigerator. I enjoyed making and sharing this recipe with you. Hope you liked it as well. Please do try this recipe and let me know how it turned out in the comments. Even if you did not like this video, please do share your feedback and thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.